Today, we're making chili rellenos. So if you're a fan of Mexican food and you like battered and fried peppers filled with cheese, stay tuned because this recipe is up next. Here I've got several medium-sized poblano peppers. One thing that makes this recipe easier is if these peppers have a stem attached here so we can dip them. If they don't, they can cause a problem. You can still use it, but it's easier with the stem. I also usually do my cooking on this glass stove, which is electric. So if you're using an electric stove, you got a problem. Because you need an open flame to roast your peppers. Sure, you could use a barbecue grill, or even broil them in your oven. But it's really controlled heat that helps you get a nice good sear when you're roasting these peppers. Just a simple rack like this one here helps the peppers stay flat and roast evenly. And once you turn the flame on, you can easily roast two peppers successfully at the same time. I usually turn the heat down to where it's barely touching the bottom of that rack. And it only takes a couple of minutes to cook each side before you have to roll them over to roast the other side. I also recommend that you use tongs and not roll them over with your bare hands like I'm doing here. Whichever you decide, just be careful. You can easily get burned using this method. I usually only have to flip these three times to get all four sides. And what this is doing is it's blistering that skin and it's going to make it a lot easier to peel the outside layer off. This makes the pepper less chewy and helps the batter stick better when we're frying. And if your pepper looks something like this all the way around, then you're good to go. Well, let's go ahead and show you both of them so you can see you can successfully roast two peppers over one flame at a time easily. In better lighting here you can see the skin is blistering up real nicely. What we want to do is put these in a bag here so they can steam a bit and it helps to cook that pepper and separate even further to easily remove the skin. This takes about 10 minutes so in the meantime we're going to grade some Monterey Jack cheese. This will be the cheese we use for the filling. But because this recipe is about the pepper and cheese, I like to grade Colby Jack cheese as well. This cheese is going to go over the top. And for a little more gourmet look, taste and flavor, we're going to use queso fresca cheese. This is a real brittle cheese, so all you have to do is knock off a slice and you can crumble it with your fingers like feta cheese. Another option could be this Katya cheese if you preferred. It's like Mexican Parmesan. But that'll be up to you. So we've got our Monterey, we've got our Colby Jack, and we have our Queso Fresca. Now we can start removing the roasted skin. I generally use just a butter knife like this and lightly scrape the outside. I find it's the easiest way to do it without making a huge mess and tearing open the pepper. They're very soft and fragile at this point, so you need to be careful. Now once you get cleaned up a bit, you can go ahead and take a knife and cut a slit right down the folded side. Now once you open it up, you can remove the seeds if you want, but sometimes you damage the pepper. Plus, I find it helps the stability when you're holding the top, so I just leave them. Besides, you don't really need a lot more room for cheese. Take that Monterey Jack and stuff it in there, trust me going to be plenty. The important thing now is to get them to seal up so the cheese doesn't leak. Just fold that flap side and toothpick the top and the bottom. Go through the top layer, straight through the bottom layer, and then come back out the other side. That'll hold it the best. Then we're going to come right over the top of it here with a little bit of flour. And you're going to want to do this on all sides. This is important because it's going to help the batter stick. Once they're done, you're going to throw it in the freezer for about 20 minutes. Now the batter for chili rellenos is made out of eggs, but you want to separate the yolk from the whites. And this batter is a lot easier to make if you use a mixer. And you start by mixing the egg whites first. Once they start to thicken up a bit, you can turn the machine up. And you want to mix for 5 to 10 minutes until they reach a stiff peak. And you can slow the mixer down and slowly add in your egg yolks. Now contrary to popular belief, you do not have to fold your egg yolks in. 
That's why I turned the mixer down. This batter turns out just fine. Just add a little bit of flour with a little bit of salt in there for texture and flavor. Now we can remove our toothpicks from our poblano stuffed peppers. Should be cold enough now to hold their shape as we dip them into the egg batter. It's going to take several dips up and down because the batter is very airy and frothy. So back and forth until it adheres to the pepper and looks real smooth like this. Then you can lay them right down in your hot cooking oil, approximately 350 degrees, and then about every two minutes here, you can flip them over and they look golden brown. And while they're browning on the outside, that cheese is melting on the inside. And when they're done, it should look something like this. You can set it down on a plate with paper towels to absorb that leftover oil. See here? Now that is a thing of beauty. Let's go in for the close-up. Now when it comes to plating, I use my chili sauce recipe, which I'll include in the description below and at the end of this video if you want to just click the link. This is what I use when I make enchiladas, and this is what I use with the chili rellenos. And once I've got a good layer across the bottom of that plate, I drop that chili relleno right in the center and cover the top with Colby Jack cheese. Then spoon some more sauce right over the middle of that cheese. Then I throw it in the oven, right under the broiler, for about a minute to two minutes till that cheese melts. Then once it's done, it should look something like this. Then I top it with my pico de gallo recipe, and I'll include a link for that at the end of this video and in the description as well. Then over the top with that crumbled queso fresco cheese. And there you have it, chili rellenos right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.